Hi everyone and welcome to this week's Crime and Punishment story. This week I am covering the story of Edward Wilkinson who was also known as the Flying Butcher and the murder of P.C. John Graham in Reckington in 1889. But before we begin can I just say if you do enjoy this story then please give it a thumbs up and if you are new here or haven't already done so then please do consider subscribing to the channel to help support the content we create. Thank you. Edward Wilkinson was born in the Sunderland area in around 1845 and was said to be around 44 years old at the time of the crime. He was married possibly to a lady by the name of Margaret and was said to have six children. He came from a family of butchers but he had originally worked as a forge man at the Philadelphia pit but he had lately taken to doing casual butchering jobs around his local area which had earned him the nickname of the Flying Butcher. He was described as being a fair-skinned man with brown hair and green eyes and he was around five foot seven and a little on the stout side. Edward had been arrested several times in the past, twice for assault, once for playing pitch and toss and once for trying to sell meat that was unfit for human use. He was a man who really disliked the police, perhaps because of his several run-ins with them in the past. PC John Graham, the victim, was 28 years old and married to a lady called Alice Geddes. They had been married in around 1883 and they had four children together. He had been born in Greenhead near Holtwistle in Northumberland and had started his working life as a miner. He had joined the police force in September of 1883, but he had left again in December of the same year, only to rejoin in January of 1884. No reason is given as to why he left the first time, but the second time around he seemed to be more settled in this job, and by 1889 he had been newly appointed the position of residential constable in the village of Reckington. In early January of 1889, P.C. Graham was called to the home of Edward Wilkinson. Edward was attempting to throw his wife out onto the street. P.C. Graham calmed him down a little and was in the process of leaving when Edward suddenly lunged towards him with a poker threatening to do for him. P.C. Graham was able to calm him down a second time but as he left the house Edward followed him shouting obscenities and behaving in a threatening manner. This was enough for Edward to find himself summoned to court in Gateshead a couple of days later where he was fined two and sixpence and six shillings costs for his threatening behaviour. He said that he would pay the fine as he did not wish to spend two weeks in prison and he then told the chief constable that he would fettle him. Both Edward and P.C. Graham then went back to Reckington. P.C. Graham heading to his home in Springfield Terrace where he talked to his wife about the case. He said that Edward had behaved in a very threatening manner but he did not appear to feel that he was in any danger from the man as he then headed into the village for his usual patrol of the high street which would have passed the area where Edward lived. Edward had returned home to his wife in a terrible mood telling her that he planned revenge. He then saw P.C. Graham pass his house and he angrily told his wife that he was going to kill him. He grabbed a knife and headed outside. His wife followed him and tried to stop him, but he pushed her to the ground and hit her several times. It would seem that P.C. Graham did not see what was going on behind him, but several of the villagers had heard the commotion between Edward and his wife and were watching him from a slight distance. Edward rushed to catch up to P.C. Graham. He then grabbed him by the arm, spun him round and he plunged the knife into the right hand side of his chest without any warning. Reports differ a little at this point. Some witnesses said that P.C. Graham had sensed the attack and was drawing his truncheon as Edward approached. Others say he grabbed for it after he'd been stabbed. But whatever was the case, he collapsed on the side of the road and Edward grabbed the truncheon and began to hit him with it. 
The onlookers were too scared to do anything. They could only watch until Edward eventually stood up and walked away, the knife in one hand and the truncheon in the other. And it seems that he was shouting as he went that he had killed one policeman and he was now off to Aiton Banks to kill another. The onlookers now rushed to the side of P.C. Graham and a butcher by the name of Mr. Scott sent for Dr. Galloway, who lived only a few yards from the scene. But it was obvious to all that P.C. Graham was dead and nothing could be done for him. By the time the doctor had arrived, Edward had fled the scene and no one seemed to know for certain which direction he had headed in. It was the vicar of Aiton Banks, the Reverend Samuel Atkinson, who contacted the police at Gateshead. He was able to use the telephone at Springwell Village as this was the closest phone in the area to Reckington. The Reverend Atkinson also organised search parties to look round the local area in the hope of quickly finding Edward, who had by now been seen heading in the direction of Bertley. It would seem that Edward was wandering around in different directions. He went into many pubs along the way and in each one he told the story of what he had done to P.C. Graham. Many did not believe him as he was known to make up outlandish tales. But one landlord contacted the police to see if the story was true. And it was because of this that the police were finally able to track him down. He was drinking in a public house by the name of the Railway Inn in South Hilton and when the police arrived they surrounded the building so he could not leave. P.C. Lambert arrested him on suspicion of the murder of P.C. Graham and Edward replied by saying, If that's it, I'll go but stop till I drink my beer, which oddly they did and they allowed him to finish his drink. On arriving at the police station, the murder weapon was found hidden down Edward's trouser leg. He had been asked if he had been searched and he had replied that indeed he had and had given up all his weapons. However, Sergeant Johnson was not so sure. He had P.C. Lambert stand behind Edward and he then lifted his trouser leg to reveal the knife. The sergeant was lucky to quickly move out of the way after removing the knife as Edward tried to strike out at him with his fists. The inquest was held at the Royal Oak Inn at Reckington on Saturday, the day after the crime had taken place. Three witnesses, including Mary Coulson and Mary Hunter, said they had seen Edward approach P.C. Graham from behind and stab him with a butcher's knife. They also said they had seen him attack him with his own truncheon, hitting him about the head and body. Robert Smith, the landlord of the Grey Mare Inn at Aiton Banks, said Edward had come into his pub and told how he'd killed one policeman and that he was a way to kill Dodds. Dodds was a PC at Aiton Banks. Robert said he left the pub to go and warn a PC Dodds. The coroner said he found it hard to believe that Edward was allowed to leave and that no one tried to stop him, but he was told that Edward was too big to stop. Dr Galloway said he had been called to the scene and had arrived within five minutes, but he said that by then P.C. Graham had sadly already died. He said he found one large stab wound which was close to the right lung, he said many large blood vessels would have been severed and death was due to blood loss. He said he also found wounds to the head and body which could have been caused by a truncheon, but they, to him, were of little importance in terms of the cause of death. A young boy by the name of Thomas Swallow of the Swan Inn, Sheriff's Hill, said he had been going about his work on the afternoon of the crime. He said he had seen P.C. Graham heading towards him and Edward was hurrying along behind him. He said he felt that P.C. Graham had no idea the man was behind him. He saw Edward stab him and then attack him with the truncheon. He said that like many others around at the time, he was too scared to confront Edward and was only able to watch as he walked away from the scene. Several other witnesses testified to what they had seen which was very similar to the details already given. The jury at the inquest very quickly returned a verdict of guilty of willful murder against Edward Wilkinson and he was committed for trial. 
The funeral of PC Graham was to take place in Greenhead, Northumberland, and on Tuesday, January the 29th, 1889, officers from the Borough Police Force, led by Inspector Harris and Mills, marched four abreast to Springfield Terrace, where they lined the road and formed a double line from the house to the hearse. Just before 11am, the coffin was placed in a glass-sided, horse-drawn hearse. The streets were crowded with people paying their respects. The procession was led by the Royal Exhibition Band, followed by the hearse, two mourning coaches, the police, 18 carriages containing civic representatives, seven private coaches and the pedestrian mourners. The streets were said to be so crowded that the coaches, coaches had difficulty passing. But when they reached the high-level bridge, the public departed, leaving only the morning coaches to continue on to Central Station, where they transferred to a train, which had been reserved especially for their use. On arriving at Greenhead, the procession of mourners were met by a large crowd, and the graveside was lined by many more mourners. The service was performed by the Reverend A. C. C. Vaughan. It had been P. C. Graham's wife who had wished for him to be buried in the town where he had been born, and today you can see a headstone at his burial site in the village churchyard that was paid for by subscriptions from many of the police forces in England, Scotland and Wales. It states that he was cruelly murdered in the faithful execution of his duty. Two funds were organised for the relief of both families by the Reverend Atkinson, P.C. Graham, leaving a widow and four children, and Edward's six young children, were also left without a provider other than their mother, who was described as being a hard-working and industrious woman. People did give generously, and it was said that there was enough money, over £1,000, in the fund for Alice Graham to last the family for several years. However, I did not find any details as to how much was given to Edward's widow. The trial was held at Durham before Mr Justice Denham on February the 26th, 1889. When asked how he pleaded, Edward replied in a firm voice, not guilty. It was said that he appeared to be annoyed to be there, as if he felt he had done nothing wrong. A lot of the information at the trial was the same as that at the inquest, apart from the following. Mary Coulson said she had heard screams in the street and had gone to see what was wrong. She said she found Edward's wife in the street screaming. She stood beside her and tried to calm her down and they both saw Edward attack P.C. Graham. Mary Atkinson said she also saw Edward attack P.C. Graham. She said he passed her afterwards and she asked him, Why did you do it? And he replied he would do the same for her. William Lennox, a young boy, said he had found P.C. Graham's truncheon near to Edward's house. He had been seen carrying it away with him after the attack and seems to have discarded it soon after. Several other witnesses testified that Edward had not lived in the village very long, around two years, and that many people were afraid of him and that he was not well liked. He was prone to outbursts of anger and most of the villagers avoided him if possible. The defence suggested that Edward had not been in his right mind at the time of the attack. Halloui said at the time that he was not suggesting that Edward was a lunatic at all times. He did feel that it was for the jury to decide if he had acted in madness when he attacked P.C. Graham. He even suggested that Edward had, at some time, had a fractured skull and had a doctor examine him in court saying that this may have made him act in a strange or crazy manner. However, nothing was found to suggest that this story was true. The judge, in summing up, said that this was a case where there was a clear motive for the crime. Edward had been angered at the punishment he had received at the court that day for the crime which P.C. Graham had summoned him for, and he had said at the time that he would get his revenge. The murder of P.C. Graham was, in his eyes, his revenge. He said he had listened to the arguments of the defence on the subject of insanity, but felt he could not honestly agree or suggest to the jury that Edward may be insane. 
The jury took only three minutes before returning a verdict of willful murder against Edward Wilkinson. Edward, at many times during the trial, had shouted out in anger, and this was no different. As the judge sentenced him to death by hanging, Edward yelled out, Let's have it then, it's not worth bothering. The judge continued and said that his remains would be buried within the grounds of Durham Prison. Edward then, then saluted the judge, smiled at those in the courtroom, picked up his hat and left the dock, still smiling. As was the case at the time, a petition was started to commute the sentence. On this occasion, the reason would be insanity. And by the beginning of March, a letter was received by the solicitors Clark and Robson of Newcastle from the Home Office to say that Edward Wilkinson's sentence of death had been commuted to life in prison on the grounds of insanity. There are no details regarding Edward's behaviour during his time in Durham Prison, but it is to be assumed that he would not have been a very well-behaved prisoner. And it would not be until July of 1889 that he would be certified as insane and sent to Broadmoor Lunatic Asylum in Berkshire to serve out his life sentence. I do not know how long he spent here as I have not been able to find any details after the 1891 census when he was still a patient at Broadmoor and there are no details that I have been able to find of his death. After the death of her husband Alice Graham and her four children Frederick, Elizabeth, Blanche and Thomas all moved to Holt Whistle where they lived with Alice's brother. Alice never remarried and in 1911 she was still living in, Holt, in the Holt Whistle area with her brother and two of her children, Frederick and a younger child known as Annie who was born several years after she had moved from Reckington. It was said that she still received her police widow's pension up until the time of her death in around 1935. I hope you have found this very sad and tragic story interesting. A murder which left ten children from two families without a father. It was, it seems, a senseless crime and one that was also very brutal. It seems that the suggestion that Edward Wilkinson was insane was quite correct. But what do you think? Do you think it was correct? Or do you think that he knew what he was doing and should have been hanged? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope to see you all again very soon.